Good morning. Good morning. Glad to see y'all. Welcome to St. Stephen Community Church. Um, with any luck, the weather will hold until we are at home. Or not. We need rain too. But hopefully after we get home. Or after we go to lunch or whatever it is we're doing after church this afternoon. Anyway, good to see y'all. Those of you watching on YouTube or Facebook, welcome. We're glad you're with us as well. Uh, again, I want to encourage you to send us your email. You'll find our contact information on the websites. Um, if you send us your email, we'll be glad to send you a copy of our weekly bulletin via email. We won't be trying to sell you anything. We just want you to have the bulletin because it contains the words to the hymns we're singing, any readings we're doing. For instance, this morning we will be taking Holy Communion and it includes the liturgy for Holy Communion. Um, which brings me to the next point. If you prefer to use the safety cups rather than taking communion by intention, there are cups available back there on the little table near the door. Uh, otherwise, we will be doing it the traditional way um, with the bread and juice here at the front. Um, if you are watching on YouTube or Facebook, feel free to get some elements together for yourself and you can join us in that as well. Um, let's see. Those of you who wish to attend, there is an information meeting and worship session on February the 10th, that's this coming Saturday, between 10 a.m. and 3.30 p.m. It is not the only purpose for this gathering, but one of the reasons for it is for churches who are trying to determine whether they wish to join the Global Methodist Church or stay independent or whatever that their, their path calls for them to do. Um, you do need to register if you're going to go, and the uh, uh, website where you can register, that link is provided in your bulletin. Um, we are also going to have an Ash Wednesday service, uh, February the 14th at 3.30. We will be gathering here to have an Ash Wednesday service and impose ashes, so please... Uh, Feel free to come and, and join us for that. Um, I did remember to put the Must Ministries jar out. So uh, if you wish to make a donation to Must Ministries, they appreciate our support. The money goes to help them feed the hungry and provide places for the homeless. And uh, it's a great, great place to, uh, to give. Also, you can add it to your the designation line on your offering check and we'll make sure that that gets to us. Um, something new that we just started uh, and we're asking people to participate uh, as we move forward as a new church or a, the same church under a new name, if you will. Uh, we've asked people to pray for the church for discernment through our courses in the future and uh, looking for opportunities to grow and spread the gospel. So uh, if you got more people praying at the same time, your prayers are more powerful. So if we could have people praying at eight in the morning or at eight in the evening or at eight in the morning and eight in the evening, um, that would be absolutely wonderful. Um, and there's something reassuring about knowing that you are being joined by others when you pray. So um, we're asking people to join in that, that ministry. Um, I think that's all my announcements this morning. So we're going to move forward uh, with our first scripture reading. I'm sorry? Oh, I forgot them all. Pastor Greg has a birthday this week.
let me slide past that one. Are you okay. He's 49 or are you 50? Now? I am officially, as of Wednesday, on Medicare. <laughs> um, since we're going through the, uh, these announcements anyway, John and Terry Harris are celebrating 18 years as members of St. Stephen, and we want to com uh, commend that as well and uh, celebrate with them. Thank you all very, very much. Our scripture reading is Psalms 147, verses 1 through 11, and verse 20. Praise the Lord. How good it is to sing praises to our God, for he is gracious and a song of praise is fitting. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the outcast of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He determines the number of stars. He gives to all them their names. Great is our Lord and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. The Lord lifts up the downtrodden. He casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make melody to our God on the lyre. He covers the heavens with clouds, prepares rain for the earth, makes grass grow on the hills. He gives to the animals their food and to the young ravens when they cry. His delight is not in the strength of the horse, nor is his pleasure in the speed of a runner. But the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him, in those who hope in his steadfast love. He has not done this with all other nations. They do not know his laws. Praise the Lord. The Lord of God for the people of God. Thank you, God. Good morning. Good morning. Our first hymn of praise is um, in your bulletin, and it's Great is the Lord. <laughs>
As we prepare our hearts for prayer, I wanted to call attention to something. Those of you who use the elevator may have noticed the uh, tank out in the narthex. Um, I would consider it our duty to celebrate our uh, fellow congregation this evening is planning a baptism service for 12 people who will be baptized into the family of God. Praise the Lord and amen. amen. Um, proud of them and, and the way that they have been growing. Um, under prayer requests, we have one that we want to add. I know of Cindy Clegg has kidney stones. We want to pray for Cindy. Um, the, that situation may be resolved with as little discomfort as possible. Um, and before I move on, does anybody else have a prayer request they want to add? Okay. Um, we want to pray for Susan Corbett. And uh, okay, uh, uh, one of our preschool families that from our old church, their their father passed away. I was having trouble getting that straight. But anyway, we're going to pray for that family as they go through their time of mourning. Mourning. Pray for Judy, Jerry Harris, Lois Garner, Gene Smith. Hayden, Ron Johnson, Joan Hill, we want to continue praying for Alton Waits, Anne Marie and Dave, Amanda Schmidt, Bobby, Carol Fuller, Camilla Munez, Caroline, Elizabeth Fagan, Faye New, Gene Smith, Graham Sykes, Jack Lamberson, Gene Kibler, Logan Smith, Margaret Hughes, Marguerite Kaler, Margaret and Danny Simpson, Marlo Keith, Martha Childers, Phyllis McLean, Ray Tucker, Sandy, Sarah Polk, Victor Blackstone, Wendy Tedder, Willie Neal Kane. Also, there is civil unrest in Brazil. We want to pray for peace there. We want to pray for the victims of any and all natural disasters, people who've been left without homes or had their lives turned upside down. We've been praying for the people of Israel and in the Middle East and, and the war in Ukraine and Violence seems to be on the uptick around the world, especially in the Middle East area, so please remember them in your prayers, and we want to pray for all of those who may have had their lives disrupted or their loved ones taken from them because of these wars. I also want to start praying for the folks that we visit at Gaines Park. Um, senior Living Center. I consider them part of us now, and we need to be praying for them and, and their well-being and comfort and, and their walk with Jesus as well as our own. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Most gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for all your many blessings. Sometimes when I read this list of prayer requests, I think that it is way too long but in reality, we could read the names and see the faces and recall the needs for prayer. The list would never end. We ask you to bring peace and comfort to all of those we've named. Bring healing to those who are suffering with illness and injury. Bring wisdom to those who lead and who make decisions on our behalf.
bring the message of the gospel and the sacrifice of your son Jesus Christ to all who need to hear it and that would be all strengthen our church as we seek direction and go about the business of the church doing ministry and trying to carry your message bless all who are in this room and all who have been and be with those who are watching through other means bring peace where there is war bring comfort where there is need and bring healing where there is illness we pray all these things in the name of your precious Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. Join me as we read our statement of faith. You will find the Apostles' Creed in your bulletin. Please read with me. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker, maker of heaven and earth, Indeed. and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitting at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
This morning my scripture reading is going to come from 1 Corinthians chapter 9 verses 16 through 23. That's 1 Corinthians 9, 16 through 23. If I proclaim the gospel, this gives me no ground for boasting. For an obligation is laid on me, and woe betide me if I do not proclaim the gospel. For if I do this of my own will, I have a reward. But if not of my own will, I am entrusted with a commission. What then is my reward? Just this, that in my proclamation I may make the gospel free of charge so as not to make full use of my rights in the gospel. For though I am free with respect to all, I have made myself sl a slave to all, so that I might win more of them. To the Jews I became as a Jew in order to win Jews. To those under the law I became as one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, so that I might win those under the law. <laughs> to those outside the law I became as one outside the law. Though I'm not free from God's law, but I'm under Christ's law, so that I might win those outside the law. To the weak I became weak, so that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, so that I might by any means save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, so that I may share in its blessings. The word of God for the people of God. Sometimes I think Paul spent too much time putting together tongue twisters. Sometimes it is remarkable just how easy it is to overlook God's message or to miss the urgings of the Holy Spirit. Many times I sit down to work on a sermon and I have no idea where it's going until it gets there. This week, I was fretting over what God's message was for me and for us in this scripture. And I was getting no inspiration at all. As late as 6 o'clock last night, I had no idea what I was going to be preaching about this morning. I even considered changing the scripture reading at the last minute. And get some inspiration. Of course, as God would have it, the answer was right in front of me. Or, to be more accurate, <clears throat> the answer had been preparing itself for me for weeks, for months. For years. I know that sounds dramatic. This isn't going to be the great sermon that that might make it sound like it's going to be. It's just that I'm trying to acknowledge how nothing, and I do mean absolutely nothing, happens in God's world by accident. And here's an example of what I mean by that. I'm sure many of you have heard me talk about the fact that I got my first 
feeling that I had a calling while I was on the walk to Emmaus. That was combined with getting close to the end of the first year of taking disciple Bible study. And between those two events, I found myself in the process of discernment all over my calling. I, there was no doubt in my mind God had a job for me to do, but what was it? Pastoring is just one of many things that God can call us to do. So from the weekend of Walk 160 to my very first day at St. Stephen, almost five years went by. And that five years was the process of me discerning my call, getting the blessing of mentors and church leaders, researching it and talking about it to make sure it was the right thing, and then getting a little bit of education so I could do it. And what has all of that got to do with this sermon? Well, it's like this. Like I said, nothing happens in God's world by accident. About a month ago, I got a call from a young man who was a pilgrim on a walk to Emmaus that I had served not too long ago. He wanted to have lunch, so I met him for lunch. And he told me that he thought he was being called to be a pastor. So we talked about his calling. And he too had felt the first nudges while he was on his walk to Emmaus. Less than two weeks ago, I was contacted by a gentleman from a walk that I served on just last fall. And he wanted to discuss his calling as a pastor. So he and I had a talk last week, and I'm putting together some material for him. So Friday night, Kim and I went to what's called an Emmaus gathering. Those of you who've been involved in Walk to Emmaus know what that is, probably. And it was just a, a gathering of the Emmaus community and a time to worship and celebrate. And among the guests at that gathering Friday night was a pilgrim who I had met on walk number 203, which I served in October. And he has discerned that he has a call to the ministry and he has started seminary at Asbury. So this morning I'm preaching on a scripture where Paul describes his calling to preach. Like I said, nothing happens in God's world by accident. And like one of Kim and I's favorite TV characters, I don't believe in coincidence. Jeremiah 29 says this, you've all heard it from verse 11. Surely I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for your welfare and not for harm, to give you a future with hope. Then when you call upon me and come and pray to me, I will hear you. See, the amazing thing is not that God arranged all of these events in my life. The amazing thing is that God is constantly weaving events like this together 
for all of our lives, all the time. It never stops. Nothing happens in God's world by accident. So every little thing that happens to us through the course of the day may be God preparing us for something in the future. And of course, the, the variable is, are we paying attention? Do we even recognize God's work in our lives? Millions and billions of events and encounters and meetings and situations are planned and devised to allow each of us to recognize and do his will for us, whatever that is. But unless we're making an effort to stay in tune with our relationship with Him, we don't even notice most of these miracles. It's just little things that happen through our day. Some of them may not be happy events. Some of them may be quite annoying. We don't see them as blessings when they happen. But the truth is, we don't know. I mean, it would be like, I, I'm sure at least one or two of you ladies have knitted something in your life where you had the needles and the ball of yarn and you knitting it together until it becomes a scarf or a hat or a shawl or something. Imagine knitting a million scarves at one time. And God's doing that all the time. Effortless, effortless, effortlessly. Do not believe for a second that God only does these things for a select few. That there's something special about a handful of people where God plans their lives and builds these events together, but it's just for them. Every single one of us has our place in God's will. Every single one of us has our spiritual gifts. Every single one of us is called to ministry in some way. Not all the same way. If we were all called to preach, who would be sitting in the pews listening? You know, if we were all called to lead the choir, where would the choir come from? You know, if we were all called to be the church secretary, Where would the business for the secretary to do come from? We're all different. Not everybody is made to get up and preach. But everybody has a job to do that helps in the spreading of the gospel of the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Everybody. And every event in our lives prepares us for some future opportunity to contribute to the kingdom. <clears throat> so with or without your knowledge, with or without your permission, God is preparing you. Sometimes that's a little scary. Sometimes we wish God wasn't looking. 
Somebody in a sports car passed me on the way here this morning and got into my lane as they went by. And for about five minutes, I was no longer a Christian. And that's okay. Just proves that I need to learn a little more patience and tolerance. You don't have to amen that, Kim. But we're all called, each in our own way. God is leading you to where he needs you to be, not necessarily where you want to be or where you think you should be. Or like they used to tell me when I first started getting sober, your best thinking got you here. That was not a compliment. So let's look at what God is doing with Paul in this scripture for a minute. The Apostle Paul says, if I proclaim the gospel, this gives me no ground for boasting. For an obligation is laid on me, and woe betide me if I do not proclaim the gospel. See, Paul realizes that he has to preach. God didn't ask him, did he want to preach? He didn't even want to tolerate Christians. He wanted to kill them all. That's what he wanted. God didn't ask his opinion. God told him he was going to preach. Period. I mean, Paul's on the road to Damascus, and Jesus himself appears to Paul and says, you're going to preach. You know, what else do you say? But yes, sir. Except, you know, some of the people God called haven't said yes, sir. But when Christ calls you, you know you've been called whether you want to cooperate or not. And many of us have tried to run from God. But you can't get away with it. You can't escape. You're simply compelled to follow sooner or later. You may resist, as many of us do, but resistance is futile, as uh, you may have heard it said, and you may not have. Paul is not the only one obligated to preach the good news. He's not even close to being the first one. Would be put under that obligation. Moses did everything he could to escape his call when he was called to deliver the Hebrews. Many of the prophets tried to avoid their destiny because being a prophet was no fun a lot of the time. Jonah ran from God as if he could hide. He went so far as to have himself thrown overboard from a ship during a storm trying to get away from God. He was swallowed by a whale trying to get away from God. All of this in his desire to evade God's call to preach to the people in Nineveh. God has a plan. 
And God is always busy preparing us to do his will. And most of the time, our part is just trying to be willing and open so that we see God's will for us. You know, I have no idea what the future is for any one of the three guys who talked to me about becoming a pastor. For all I know, God only made me a pastor so that I would be prepared to talk to them about becoming pastors. Not up to me. We just need to be willing. The second point about this sermon is contained in verses 19 and 23. I want to take a look at that for a moment. But first I want to look at some Examples. In Genesis 12, 1, the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. God came to Abram. Because Abram came from a land of pagan worship. Abram wasn't out there looking for God. God came to Abram. In Exodus chapter 3, verse 2, it says, There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw he had turned aside to see, God called out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. Now Moses, at this point in his life, is a disgraced prince, escaped from Egypt, hanging out in hiding in Midian. But God came to him. In Acts chapter 2, verse 5, it says, Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. spoke in a way that each person understood. They didn't have to change to hear what was being said. And here's the ringer, John 3, 16. You know this. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but may have eternal life. We didn't go to Jesus. Jesus came to us. No matter what we look like, no matter what kind of life we're living, no matter what our beliefs are, God comes to us. God seeks us out, no matter where we are, no matter how we are, no matter who we are. On Pentecost, there were people from many nations speaking many different languages. A lot of the people in Jerusalem that day were not Jews. They weren't there to celebrate Pentecost. They were there to sell their goods. They were traders. They were merchants. They were just taking advantage of the huge crowd that had gathered for Pentecost. And yet each one heard the disciples speak in their own language. 
God wanted everybody there to witness the power of the Holy Spirit in the disciples. God wanted all of them to hear the good news. So Paul says, for though I am free with respect to all, I have made myself a slave to all, so that I might win more of them. To the Jews I became as a Jew in order to win Jews. For to those under the law I became as one under the law, so that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law I became as one outside the law, so that I might win those outside the law. To the weak I became weak, so that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, so that I might by any means save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, so that I might, may share in its blessings. What if Paul had only gone to the Jews in his travels? Would there even be a church? See, this is this is the great failure of the church. For hundreds, if not thousands of years, we have sat in the pews waiting for the sinners to come to us. There was a time when that actually happened a little bit. I got news for you. Today, the sinners ain't coming. They're laughing at us. And they won't hear the gospel if we wait for them to come to us. I mean, I preach the gospel, but if I only preach it on Sunday morning in this room, 99.9999999% of the time, I'm preaching to people who already know the gospel of Jesus Christ. So in closing, I want to say this. Inviting people to church is great. We should all do that. We really should. But taking the church to people is better. And we don't have to be all things to all people. I'm not going to become homeless so that I can carry the gospel to the homeless. But if we're judging them, if we're talking down to them, if we're treating them like second class, they know that we're too busy judging them to really care about them and they won't hear the message. You don't have to be an alcoholic or a drug addict in order to spread the gospel to alcoholics and drug addicts. But if they don't believe we care about them, they will not hear what we have to say. Are we waiting for God to send us people to witness to? Well, if you don't realize it, he already has. He already does. Almost every single day. You know, unless you live alone and you don't leave your house, God sends somebody your way. He's already sending people for us to 
spread the gospel to them. But he doesn't hang a special sign around their necks <clears throat> saying, please tell me about Jesus. <clears throat> we don't see them because we're not willing to see them. It's uncomfortable. Several of y'all went to the revitalization classes that were going on when I first got here. It's the message that Pastor Jim was trying to tell us. You know, don't sit in the church and wait for people to come to you. Get out in the community, build some relationships, and find a way to carry that message. And I know some of you are doing that. I know we as a church are trying to do that at Gaines Park and going to the, the daycare centers and the things that we're doing. But we need to see it for what it is. I'm sure at least some of y'all have heard of the Fresh Expressions movement. That's what it's always been about is trying to come up with new ways and new ideas to carry the message to the people out there. But the moment that people think we're talking down to them, that we're judging them, or that we don't consider them worthwhile, we've already lost them. I mean, put yourself in their shoes. Who do you respond to most easily? The person looking down at you or the person walking beside you? Jesus said, for I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. We can't wait for them to come to us, folks. And we are doing some outreach ministry as a church. But we also need to be doing it every day in our everyday lives. You know, God is sending people our way. It's a fact. Just like God prepared me to talk to these men about becoming pastors, he's preparing all of us in one way or another to do our part, whatever that is. We just have to be willing to hear what he has to say. And to see what he's trying to show us. Amen? Amen. All right, we're going to move on into our liturgy for Holy Communion. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray, 
free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. So let us offer one another signs of reconciliation and love. As forgiven and reconciled people, let us offer ourselves and our gifts to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son Jesus Christ by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection. You gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread. He gave thanks to you. He broke the bread. He gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you. Gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice. In union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here. On these gifts of bread and wine, make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. For your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. <laughs>
Go forth in peace, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.